this is actually, this wasn't planned, but it is a good teaching moment. I'll show you how I debugged during the break. Um, I'll show you what the problem was and I'll show you what the problem behind the problem was. So what I did during the break was a couple things to help me debug. Uh, and this is just sort of my process. I cleaned up my print statements and I put them like right after each call because then I can run it and I can see exactly which part of the tree I care about. And the print statement is right after each command. And then that way I can see how far did we get, what's working and like, where does it fail? Um, and what that also shows me is, let's see, new left node 10. Yeah, so now part, part of it's working. Um, and then that really helped me debug. And I cleaned up some of my other print statements and I did a little bit of just cleaning up of my code to make it easier for me to read and follow along. And so here is the problem. I got lost in this recursive method because we call ourselves and I insert the left node of the tree. Um, and then that gets passed in as the argument here. So in fact, to pop back to just to, to use a, a, a graph, this diagram for a moment, um, right? The first time I call my function, it goes here. But let's say we're inserting, let's say we're inserting one, right? My insert function looks at this. It says, hey, one is less than 56. Let's recursively call ourselves again and pass this in as the tree. Hey, one is less than 22. Let's do this. Cool. Let's go ahead. Let's add one. But now that node right there, that was set to tree and now I'll get rid of all those annotations because they don't do any good. And if we look in my code, what do I return? What does this return? Well, if tree is none, it returns the new tree here. I'm returning this tree. I'm returning, I had this, this wasn't commented out before. I'm returning the tree. I was returning like the node at the bottom of the tree when what I wanted to get back was like the root of the whole tree. Like I, I want to be getting back the, the, the root. Um, and so the solution here was ended up being pretty straightforward, which is I recurse, but I don't want my recursion to like return stuff most of the time. And then this sort of functions as my base case if I get down to nothing so that my recursion doesn't go on. Well, this returns a new node. Really though, this sort of is my base case because this is what stops the recursion because we only recurse if there's something to go deeper into. Um, so this is a base case. And then like this right here is a base case. And then I just want to return I think if I do it this way, outside of all this recursion, I get back what I'm expecting. And I believe that was what I did to fix it. And now let's run this and see if this works. So now this looks like what we're expecting to see where I'm seeing, um, really this is uh, 25 actually. 25 and 10. and. Um, I, I it it gets a little tricky. I'm not sure that I explained honestly exactly what's happening with all the recursing quite quite properly, but that is the the 
the basic idea that I want to be returning like the root of my tree. Like I don't want to be returning what this recursive stuff does. Um, though it does get there. I need to, I would actually have to, I think, draw it out to understand exactly what's going on, but at least intuitively, I can sort of see the fix. And what helped me figure it out was the print statements. Because from my print statements, I saw that I was getting back like the bottom of my tree. And now we can test this out. Um, like if I insert something else, like, you know, if I just print my tree value here, I should see 50, one hopes. Yeah. And now, And the other way to do this, to be honest, would be like possibly this function uh, doesn't need to return anything at all. So I did sort of mix styles here and I apologize. But now if I add something like let's add one and let's do a print here. We're going even further left. Or actually, let's do something interesting. Um, like, well, we can do one. And now let's do um, 100. And now I think we should see this working. Um, Though apparently the last one going to write, oh, because I have to update this, of course. So there's also, you know, the, the print statements are not the best because it's still a manual process here. And we actually do have in the code examples, um, a pretty neat implementation of a string function, though it gets pretty fancy, which I'll just, I'll just show you all. Um, so in here, so the problem behind my problem was I was using this as our guide code uh, for binary search. And the searching is a lot easier than the inserting. And I just, I thought, oh, inserting will be practically the same thing. It'll be easy. I can just use this. And then that step of like connecting, you know, the node to the rest of the tree introduced this other complexity. And so that's why I just went down this, this totally wrong path. Um, if you want to dig into something interesting, we have here a string function that prints out the whole tree recursively because um, it does a whole bunch of stuff. Like it's actually calling itself. Um, so it's actually recursing inside here and printing stuff. Um, so in fact, I'll just run this and we can see what it looks like and hopefully it works. Um, and if you're curious, that's worth looking at and digging into a bit. That's that's a fun one, but that's a more complex thing, and that's why we kind of wanted to to give it to you. Um, oh yeah, let's just print out the whole tree. So. That's the string function in action, which is pretty cool. And you can see it's not perfect because this is the root here and here's the left stuff and here's the right stuff, but you at least get an idea. So that 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 could be a useful thing. Um, but this is really, we kind of just walked through one of the more advanced assignments uh, that, that we've kind of got for the day with trees. Um, let me kind of show you what we have lined up to work on. Um, we've seen this visualization tool already. It's the one I was using before, um, spending some time with this. Um, this assignment is very similar to what I just implemented. Um, oh no, this one's a little different, I'll, but I'll come back to that one. This one is going to be similar to what I just did which is if you've got a binary tree, go down to the maximum depth. And so this is actually a depth first search. Um, and you may end up using, I think like a stack with it. 
So this is a good problem to dig into. Um, and this article is definitely worth reading. Um, it's by someone at Uber, I believe, talking about like their experience with like, how do they actually use these data structures in the industry? And then let me come back to this assignment. So this assignment, I would start here. This one is not tree specific, but it's binary search with arrays. Um, Cause you can do a binary search with an array as well, or a list rather, right? If I have like one, three, as long as I have a sorted list, I can use this binary search strategy. Right, because let's say I'm looking for the number three. I can choose 34 right in the middle. Well, three is less than 34. So let's just look at this half of the list. And in fact, Megan, I think you were sharing an implementation of something very similar to this the other day. Um, let's look at five. Well, three is less than five. Let's cut it in half again. Right, so we're, we're not constructing a tree, but if you look at the pattern of how this search runs, it does the same thing. Um, and except you do this with an array, so you'll probably want a pointer for the end that you're kind of like moving halfway through because we'll start right in the middle, but then we'll want probably like half of the middle and so on and so forth. Um, and that's, implementing binary search to search through a sorted array, and that will have a log n runtime complexity. And binary search is where you see log n pop up. Um, because if you think about that, like half of half of half, like that relationship ends up being log n versus the size of the input here. So this is actually a good problem to start on, even though it's not actually a tree, but it is is, is binary search, and this one might come up. So I would start here. Um, then I would recommend, um, so I implemented the harder part, which was the, the insertion, but I didn't do um, searching the tree. And we have an example for that, but I would recommend either using the example or the code that I wrote as, as guide code, write it out yourself. Um, and I think that's a good one. The maximum depth one, um, is going to be a bit more of a challenge because we haven't gone over depth first and breadth first search as much. Um, and to be honest, I'm thinking what might make more sense with that is I, I want to give you all some work time and maybe what we can do is reconvene like in the afternoon around four o'clock or something like that to do demos. And then I can go a bit more in depth on like breath first search or depth first search or whatever other questions people have. Um, so how does that, what are people's thoughts and how does that sound to folks? And let me, uh, let me actually pause this.